Kelly Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a Squirtle cake. I think this is a great cake for beginners. So if you've never made a sculpted cake before, this is a nice go-to as your first cake. The sculpting's not incredibly difficult, and there's no hand painting, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, it's nice and simple and clean and adorable. So it's perfect for you. So let's get started. I started with two three inch round layers of vanilla cake and in between each layer is a layer of buttercream. And you can just cut your cake with a circle cutter. I have one here. I used it to cut a section of the larger circle which is going to be the body and that's so that it fits right in place like a puzzle piece. So just like the head, a layer of vanilla cake, a layer of buttercream, and a layer of vanilla cake. Next, I'm going to round out the head and really it's just a half circle. So I just take my knife, it's serrated. I like to use a small one for smaller cakes and a larger one for larger cakes. And I'm just rounding it out, taking a little bit off at a time. The same goes for the body, round it out. I made the body a little more shallow so it looks like the head is raised up a little bit. Now you wanna give the entire cake a crumb coat of the buttercream. So really that's just a layer of buttercream covering the whole thing. You want it to be nice and thin. Just make sure the whole thing's covered. And then you smooth it out. Once it's nice and smooth, I'm going to add some cake clay to build up the nose. Um, cake clay is just the same stuff that cake balls are made of. It is crushed up cake. You put it in a mixer and you add a little bit of icing at a time until it has a packing texture. It's a really great way to add some details, especially when they're really, really small like this. Here I have my modeling chocolate. That's what I'm going to cover the entire cake with. So I have blue modeling chocolate and then I add a little bit of purple to the modeling chocolate. And that's because it's a bit teal, but that purple makes it more of a true blue. You can see here. It's more close to the squirtle blue than just the blue out of the bottle. Now you roll out the modeling chocolate with a rolling pin. And then you cover the head. You just work it down the sides. And then trim away the excess chocolate. I have a tutorial on how to make modeling chocolate, if you'd like to check that out. Uh, it's not too bad. It's, it's not too uh, difficult to make, and it's pretty much what I use, I would say, the majority of the time, definitely. Now I'm going to roll out some ivory modeling chocolate for the body, because the belly of his shell is an ivory color. You place it on, and again, you're trimming away the modeling chocolate and then working it into all the little creases. All right, now you can see he's kind of got a turtle face. <laughs> now for the face, because this is modeling chocolate, I go in with a sculpting tool, it has a nice point to it, and I map out where the mouth is going to be and then where the eyes are going to be. So before I really dig into the chocolate, I wanna make sure that my proportions are correct. What's nice about this is since I'm drawing so lightly on there, if I make a mistake, I can easily blend it out. If you go in deep right away and you have a mistake, then it's a little bit more difficult to fix. Now just go in and deepen those lines with a pointed sculpting tool. And blend. You can see I go in at an angle. I don't go directly at like a 90 degree angle. I'm not drawing on it. I'm pushing the chocolate up so it looks like the bottom lip goes underneath the top lip. And he's got these two little nostrils. And then the marks on his shell. I just have a photo of him up on my computer and I can see he's got one across his shoulders, one down the middle and then lines branching off of that. And here's his turtle belly. So for the eye, I take black modeling chocolate, I push it right onto the cake and I trim away the excess. And then I start to manipulate and work the chocolate into those lines. I still have those little very 
very shallow marks on there so I know where the eye is going to be. And then I just work the chocolate meeting up with those lines. And he has a little mark for an eyebrow. And now I'm going to work on the other eye. Same thing, piece of black modeling chocolate, trim away the excess, and then work it into the shape of the eye. I'm gonna add the white portion of the eye. I wanna make sure that there's still black showing on the edge because he's a cartoon. So I just take the white and I work it on both sides, little cartoon eyes. And now for the brown area of his eyes, also modeling chocolate, it's a little half moon. And I place it right on the eye and then blend it in and work it around. the white of the eye. Very cartoony, very animal. Now for the legs, they're really simple. Here I just have a chunk of modeling chocolate and I'm just shaping it into a really simple foot. And then you can go in and add the toes. Both his hands and his feet have just three toes. So you can just take a sculpting tool and uh, make those once you have the leg on. I got the leg on there. I'm working the modeling chocolate a little bit, trimming it down, and then adding the toes. And they're kind of pointed. You could definitely make these legs out of cake if you wanted to make individual legs and then cover them on the modeling chocolate. You could also use the cake clay that we used on the nose. You could just roll those up um, into the leg's shape and then cover them in modeling chocolate. I wanted this cake to be pretty simple, and I think just modeling chocolate is the easiest way to do this. But you know, if you want the entire thing to be cake, then you can go ahead and do that. Also something to consider is how many people do you want the cake to feed? Um, this was made just for me and Dave, so we're gonna be the only ones eating it. And that whole belly and head are cake, so I didn't really need to continue adding more and more cake. So the arms are just slightly smaller, but still the same thing, just a, a bit of an oval shape for the arm and then three little pointed fingers. So for the cake board, I wanted it to look like he's laying in water. You can see it's a different shade of blue. So I actually added navy blue food color to this. So I want the two colors of blue to be different. I want, you know, Squirtle to kind of pop out more than just, you know, kind of blending into the water. So here I just take a sculpting tool and I blend out the modeling chocolate onto the cake board and then trim away the excess chocolate. And it's kind of nice to leave some texture here. I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. I like that it's got, you know, some marks in it because it's supposed to represent water. Once the entire cake board is covered in blue, I took a lighter blue and I rolled it out and I actually wanted it to be a little messy. I don't want the, the rolled out piece of modeling chocolate to be perfect because I like that some areas are going to be thicker and some are a little thinner. And this is just kind of like a cartoony way to add, you know, kind of waves into the water. Now his shell has a white kind of frame around it. So I added that just to represent his shell in the back, which would be submerged underwater. And there you have it, a Squirtle cake. He's so cute. Thanks for watching. I love this cake. 
And the reason I love this cake is because it was the first time that I was able to narrow down my cake design with my patron. Speaking of patrons, I want to give a shout out to three new patrons. We have Yisti, Kyla Shea, and Eric Slade. Thank you all so, so much. If you'd like to help me come up with my next cake design, then go to patreon.com slash sidesurfcakes and become a patron.